What's up guys, my name is Brandon and this past week was jam packed with new software releases. So on Tuesday, we got iOS 14.7 RC along with the RC builds for iPadOS, watchOS, macOS and tvOS. And then on Thursday, we got iOS and iPadOS 15 beta 3 along with the latest betas for watchOS, macOS and tvOS. And then for iOS 15 public beta testers, you just got iOS 15 public beta 3 yesterday on Friday. So anyways, in this video, I wanted to discuss the latest with iOS 15 beta 3 in terms of additional new features and changes, the battery life, the performance, the bugs, bug fixes, and more. We're also going to briefly discuss iOS 14.7 along with the latest leaks and rumors on some of the upcoming Apple products like the iPhone 13 and the upcoming M1X MacBook Pro. So let's first talk about some additional new features and changes found here in beta 3. And the first thing I want to talk about is actually a pretty major change change coming in iOS 15 and this was tucked away in the release notes which did not get published until after I posted my video on iOS 15 beta 3 Apple released them a little bit later but they actually mention that you can now install software updates with only 500 megabytes of available storage so it used to be like two to three gigabytes but now you only need 500 gigabytes of available storage to install software which is huge because for me on my iphone 6s and my iphone se and my apple watch series 3 i would literally have to wipe my device before every single new update because i just simply did not have enough space but now i don't need to do that so this is huge for apple watch series 3 owners and also if you're still using a 6s or an se with the 16 gigabyte storage option this is massive because now you no longer need you know multiple gigabytes of free storage that you just simply don't have to update your phone. So that is a big and very welcome change that Apple has finally implemented here in iOS 15 beta three. Now we also have some additional changes here in beta three that I did not cover. So we're gonna have beta two on the left, beta three on the right. We're gonna go ahead and take a screenshot because I noticed a slight difference here when it comes to live text. So if I go ahead and get out of this view right here. So for live text, I actually noticed that it does not blur the background anymore. So before, you can see when I go ahead and press on the live text button down here, you can see on beta two, it would kind of blur out everything in the background, have this really weird effect on it. But now in beta three, you can see it just simply highlights the text and keeps everything else as is. It doesn't put this, you know, blur effect on the background. And it's like this for any picture as well. So like if you have a picture with some text in it, it's not going to blur the background anymore. It's just going to highlight the text and that's it. Also inside of the messages application, if you want to share your profile picture and your name with a contact, you can see that there is a new layout for that now. So it has a smaller image on the left and also the share button has like a sphere shape to it now, like a circular shape. Whereas before it just simply had this banner right here with an X. So that is redesigned also in any text field, not just in messages. But if you tap right there, you will see that it used to say text from camera, but now in beta three, it says scan text with a little glyph there of the live text feature. Also new in beta three, if we go into the find my application and go down to the items tab, you can see to the right of items, we have a plus icon right there, which is new. And if we tap on that, you can see we have the option to add other item, add air tag or share my location. So none of those were there in previous betas. Now also in beta three, we have this new pop-up that shows up when you turn off your phone for the first time or attempt to turn off your phone for the first time. So you get this pop-up that says iPhone remains findable after power off. And it says how find my helps you locate your iPhone, even when it's lost or stolen, when it's in power reserve mode or powered off. So that is a new pop-up you'll get when you try to shut down your phone. And then also after you shut down your phone, you will get this new verbiage at the bottom that says with the little glyph icon right there, iPhone findable after power off. So before on previous betas, it just said location visible after power off. So that verbiage has changed. And we also have that little icon right there as well here in beta three. Also inside of settings, you can see that the maps icon has finally been updated. So you can see there beta two on the left, beta three on the right, the maps icon has been updated and it reflects inside of settings. And speaking of settings, if we go into our settings and go to accessibility and then to touch and then down to back tap, and then to double or triple tap right here, you will notice that we have new accessibility options for background sounds. So you can see we have background sounds right there, whereas before in beta two under accessibility, background sounds does not show up. And then also in accessibility, you could see that the Siri icon has been updated here in beta three to reflect the new Siri icon on the home screen. So it's a little bit 
older here on beta 2 it shows the old siri icon right there and then also if you go into our icloud settings right here and then go to icloud you will notice that number one it doesn't hang nearly as much as it did but if you go into manage storage right here you'll notice a difference with the icons for applications so let's wait for this to load and you can see the icons are much smaller here in beta 3 compared to how they were in beta 2 and i actually like it better i think it's a little bit more condensed makes it easier to just quickly look at and tell so i'm hoping this is a feature and not just a bug but uh, i do see shortcuts twice right there so there may be a little bug going on right here well maybe it's not a bug because we have two shortcuts here on beta 2 as well but nonetheless the icons are smaller there in icloud storage and as far as other things that have changed here in beta 3 like i mentioned the release notes came out after i published my video my what's new video for beta 3 so there are a lot of other things mentioned in those release notes that i did want to cover but one of the main ones is that live text and I mentioned this in my beta 2 video, but live text just disappeared on my iPhone 12 Pro Max here. And one of the fixes in the release notes that it mentions in the release notes is that live text is now available as expected. So for some reason, if you're having issues where you did not see live text or it wasn't working, that should be fixed here in beta 3. Beta 3 also fixes an issue that caused panorama mode to produce unexpected results with low power mode enabled. We also have notify when left behind is now supported for Intel based Mac computers and Apple watch. We also have some fixes to the home screen. So it says home screen no longer quits unexpectedly when dragging a widget from the widget gallery. So sometimes when you would drag a widget to the home screen from the gallery, it would just force quit and the widget just wouldn't show up right here, but that has been fixed in beta three as well. We also have multiple private relay fixes, as you can see here in the release notes. So I had a lot of issues with private relay and betas one and two so hopefully they're all fixed in beta three you know time will tell but apple does mention multiple private relay fixes here in beta three and we also have multiple share play bugs fixed as well and one of those was one of the most annoying for me and that was where the facetime camera would just simply turn off but you can see apple mentions that bug specifically as being fixed here in beta 3. so share play should be a lot more smooth now in beta 3 and throughout the ios 15 betas now one thing i was surprised apple did not mention is the music bug so the 15 second bug when you would be playing music and it would just stop after 15 seconds so a lot of people had that and ios 14.7 the rc build and of course when the final comes out that will be fixed in that version but Apple didn't mention it in the release notes for beta three. So I've not had it, you know, I didn't even have it on iOS 14, but hopefully that is fixed here in 15 beta three. I would assume it is just because it was released after 14.7 RC, but you know, you guys have to let me know in a comment down below if that's been fixed for you here in beta three. And it's the same with the Wi-Fi bug. So on iOS 14.6 and previous versions of iOS, if you connect it to a Wi-Fi network with a percent sign in the SSID, it would basically break your Wi-Fi settings and you would not be able to reconnect to Wi-Fi without just resetting your phone or resetting the settings on your phone. So I would assume that's been fixed in beta three, again, just because it was fixed in 14.7, but we'll have to wait and see. You guys will have to let me know on that. Now, as far as Wi-Fi goes in general, Wi-Fi connectivity has actually been a lot better here on beta three than it was on beta two. I'm not having near as many disconnects as I had on beta two. I would have them, you know, pretty much ever since I first installed the software on my device. So I'm not having Wi-Fi disconnects and you know, I'm not having private relay issues either. So private relay bugs have been fixed here in beta three, which is huge because that really caused issues for me on beta two. And it's the same with airdrop. So I had a lot of issues with airdrop as well. So I've been making TikToks and I kind of airdrop a lot now from my phone to my computer. And I had major issues on beta two where I just simply could not airdrop anything. You know, it would just sit there and spin around saying it's trying to send it and never send. Even after I turned my phone off and back on, I had multiple issues with airdrop. So I've not had any yet with beta three. So I would assume that airdrop issues have been addressed as well. And then Apple also mentions a lot more bug fixes here in beta three in those release notes. So if you want to see the release notes, I will leave them linked down in the description below. If you want to read through every single thing that's been addressed or any of the known issues on there as well, because there are a lot of known issues that Apple is still working on. And by the way, one of those known issues is inside of the wow look at that that was a little lag there inside of safari it's my first time seeing that but inside of safari i did notice that when you close out of multiple applications or multiple tabs rather you know quickly it will still crash the safari application so it didn't happen there but i did notice this on both my ipad and my iphone when you close multiple tabs you know quickly it crashes safari so apple actually mentions that as a known issue and of course i did 
have that happen before I even read that as a known issue in the release notes. So that's still something that I hope gets fixed soon. But I do love Safari with this change down here where the address bar stays at the bottom as you type in. That's a nice change here in beta three. Definitely one of the best changes here in beta three. Now, as far as performance goes, performance is actually way better than beta two so far for me here on my iPhone 12 Pro Max, my 12 Pro, and then also on my iPad Pro, my M1 iPad Pro. It seems a lot better than beta two, but keep in mind that beta two was also fine for me when I first installed it and really throughout the first week. And then it got really bad for the next week or two. So I say that the performance is really good so far, but it's really going to take at least a week of using it to know for sure if it's really that much better than beta two. But right off the rip, it does feel like it's a lot better than beta two. And it also fixes a lot of issues that I had in beta two related to connectivity, which is great. And then as far as battery life goes, battery life feels about the same so far to me as beta two, which isn't necessarily great because battery life on beta 2 was actually pretty terrible for me on my iPhone 12 Pro but it is still too early to tell I will know after like a week of using it so stay tuned for next weekend's follow-up video and I will talk more about the battery life in that video but so far battery life has been pretty much the same to me honestly as beta 2 which is kind of underwhelming because again I was hoping for at least you know a noticeable change within the first couple of days but it may take longer than that to actually notice the change so now what is next for Apple so next week is going to be the week of July 19th and that's when I'm expecting to see iOS 14.7 released to the public so I would expect iOS 14.7 on either the 19th or the 20th most likely on monday the 19th is when we should see ios 14.7 because apple does have a new product coming out the magsafe charger the magsafe battery pack so i would expect to see 14.7 released on either monday or tuesday but i don't expect an ios 15 release next week because we're probably still on a two-week beta release cycle so that would put us on the week of the 26th and of course it could be any day on the week of the 26th for when we can expect to see ios 15 beta 4 and then after beta 4 we could be switching over to a one week beta cycle which will be nice and we'll talk more about that later but that is the projected schedule as of now but of course apple is super unpredictable so they could do anything they want and just surprise us so that's what i'm guessing for now but if things change i will keep you guys posted over on twitter and then also i will be making you know my follow-up videos every single weekend as well with updates and those now aside from the software side of things we also had some apple news come out over the past week that i wanted to briefly run through first off the iphone 13. so mark german published a new report this past week that says apple has asked suppliers to build as many as 90 million next generation iphones this year which is a 20 percent increase from the 2020 iPhone shipments. So that's crazy. And he also mentions that these new iPhones will indeed have a smaller notch and that next year, the 2022 iPhones will have an even smaller notch than these upcoming 2021 models, which is great. And that's definitely going to, you know, have Apple, they don't really even need to compete, but at least the notch is gonna be smaller to compete with the smaller notches on other phones throughout the industry. And then finally, German did also mention that Apple will not be implementing Touch ID into the flagship iPhones this year. So he says, quote, the company has tested an in-display fingerprint scanner for this year's devices. However, that feature will likely not appear on this generation. And then speaking of the iPhone 13, Barclays is reporting that the upcoming iPhones might support Wi-Fi 6E which is just Wi-Fi 6, but with added support for the 6 gigahertz spectrum, which will offer faster Wi-Fi speeds and lower latency than Wi-Fi 6, which is already incredibly fast. And most people don't even have Wi-Fi 6 routers, but Apple is staying ahead of the game with adding Wi-Fi 6E. And then finally, the upcoming M1X MacBook Pros coming later this year will apparently only be offered in up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. So Apple Track is reporting that 16 and 32 gigabytes will be the only two options for RAM on these upcoming MacBook Pros, which is a bit underwhelming for a pro device. I would have really liked to see a 64 gigabyte of RAM option. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is my follow-up review on iOS 15 beta three, which is out for both developers and public beta testers. So if you guys enjoyed this video and enjoy these follow-up videos in general, I would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my iOS 14.7 coverage next week. And then my iOS 15 beta four coverage the following week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those and click that bell if you're really into watching these YouTube videos and following along, which I know you guys are. Some of you guys are, 
and I really appreciate you guys. I read all your comments, so I always know who's early to comment on my videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.